Welcome, dear viewers, to a new episode of Dialogue Horizon. Uh, in this episode, definitely we'll continue on the uh, most important concern to most of Sudanese people, which is the ongoing settlement or the process of making a breakthrough uh, through the impasse, which is been prevailing for about six months and about one year and more than that without prime minister of the country, without uh, government. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, important event, which is the ratification and signature of the framework uh, agreement. This is, will be the main, the theme of our episode. So that's why I'm very happy, I'm very glad to host in this episode one of our important journalists the press person, columnist, and uh, he has very good connection with a lot of international uh, communities, non-NGOs, uh, non-governmental uh, uh, institutions. Uh, it is our friend uh, Makki Al-Maghrabi. Welcome, Ustaz Makki Al-Maghrabi, for being with us in this uh, very important episode. Thank you, and welcome to the viewers. You, you will re have been selected very carefully, selected because the issue is a little bit sticky. So yes, we it's we, my, we my pleasure, my honor. Okay. Also, we have our, our friend, he's, he's known to most of the uh, viewers. He's an associate professor, Samani Hanun. He's known, he's an activist in the revolution, and he uh, also he works in many different universities, mainly in the economics. Yeah. But he has a lot of contribution in the political arena. Uh, in different parts of, of, of Sudan and Africa. Welcome. Uh, yeah, thanks uh, for this opportunity. I'm happy to join this episode with my friend Al Makki, and I hope that uh, will create a difference and make value added to discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we'll just start, start by Ustaz Makki al Maghrib. Makki al Maghrib is the columnist. By the way, he writes Arabic and English, two, two columns, almost weekly or daily, but he's, he's well informed and uh, it will be very beautiful in this episode. Uh, Professor Ustaz uh, Makkil Maghrabi, two weeks ago a very important event occurred in Sudan with the ratification of the, what they call it, <coughs> the framework agreement, uh, of which the most important uh, points of this, maybe you can add the most important uh, points are first, the uh, refusal, complete, complete categorical rejection of any attempts, coup, military coup attempts. Uh, secondly, to, to, to have uh, a balanced external uh, policies mm -hmm. with different, 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 different actors to, to, to be in the, the balanced situation. Uh, also, to agree on a certain non-partisan person to be the president, civilian, to be the president of the, the sovereign council. Uh, also, the, the, the interim or the transitional period is decided to be two years, followed by, by uh, general elections. And the last point, important point, is to agree and to start implementation of the Juba Agreement, October 2020 uh, Juba Agreement, with some modifications. So, first of all, it says Makki Al Maghrabi. Let us know what people are confused. What, why, what, what, is, what is the name? Framework. Does this mean something temporary? Does this mean uh, it can be... Uh, I, uh, people are asking about why called the framework uh, agreement. It seems that it, it will be followed by something final. Uh, first of all, I think uh, it is better than it was, by all means, mm -hmm. to have people uh, negotiating and uh, discussing things and uh, trying to move forward. So first of all, I think the congratulations for this framework agreement and for the people that they took the brave and the bold decision to go ahead in this controversial compromise because there is no other way to, to, to solve this problem if you don't have dialogue and you reach a level of agreement. Framework agreement, by definition, is incomplete agreement. So it is not a, a big surprise that people, when they say that it is incomplete, this is the nature of the framework agreement. It is, uh, it is, uh, it is higher than MOU, Memorandum of Understanding. It is higher than 
uh, uh, principles declaration it is framework agreement but it is not full agreement it means that the people that uh, agreed on some points and they want to put these points aside of the other uh, point that they didn't reach agreement and to move forward so the real challenge to this framework agreement is not the implementation why the real challenge is to complete the agreement on the suspended issues and the issues that they didn't reach an agreement and the real challenge to this framework agreement to recruit more people and to invite more people to to bring them in this agreement so the framework agreement by its nature it is something uh, forward in the way of completing an agreement framework agreement I, I, it, it break uh, the eyes between big uh, people uh, that fighting on the political uh, ground it brought more people that they signed that they out of the FFC freedom and for uh, forces of freedom and change uh, so the, the framework agreement in itself it's a big step I, I can just rem uh, remember that when China and Taiwan they signed uh, a framework agreement in 2010 and that it was a big surprise so people they didn't ask what the Chinese and, and people of Taiwan they signed on because if you have China and Taiwan sign on a piece of paper that is nothing written on it that is a big achievement <laughs> so we were fighting the political powers were fighting they are calling for uh, for uh, regime change again they are calling for uh, embargo in Sudan and the sanction is there and the, the, uh, the international community is very worried about Sudan and all this come to the end and now we have a dialogue and the real challenge is for those who signed this agreement to continue with the same bravery that made them sign the agreement to discuss suspended issues and to invite other people invite other. and not to exclude political powers yes being part of the freedom forces and freedom and change or being part of the other political forces in the Sudanese that, political that, arena that's, that's very clear very good very good okay associate professor Samani having heard uh, yeah. he elaborated he gave the idea of the framework which is very clear now to many people it is a starting point actually yeah. if they make a final uh, it, it closes the doors for, for others to come in, yeah. but now doors are opened by the framework agreement so that, yeah. and he actually is saying that the, 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 the strengths of the framework agreement will yield uh, fruitful results by the inclusion of other, other forces. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, now we, we, we know that there is a wide spectrum of political, different political parties and armed struggle movements and leaders. They are adamantly against this framework agreement. Yeah. Especially some, well, some people that are showing that they say, they say it is incomplete. Although, Mr. Uh, Maghreb now he, he, he's saying that, as if he's saying that it is intended to be incomplete, to be completed by others. Like, for example, people they talk about the 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 the, the uh, framework agreement did not uh, talk about about um, the Justice. complete removal of the of the of the army from the political area going back to the barracks did not clearly stated and uh, about also the transitional justice and the justice itself yeah. uh, Peace about the corruption about Peace. the dismantling of the <laughs> hosted regime yeah. about uh, the, the, the three the three nodes so there are a group of people many people you cannot for uh, say that you cannot undermine their effect in the what is happening today so what is your comment on this and what will be the effect of the those who are are rejecting bearing in mind that some of the signatories of the free, free, force of freedom and change they are they are reluctant to accept to, i don't know why but they are reluctant to accept can you elaborate on this issue uh, first of all uh, excuse me to extend a special greeting to the december revolution uh, community everywhere uh, inside and outside sudan on occasion of December Revolution during this month on 19 December. 
And I hope that this year will be a year of political stability for the revolution makers, a year of economic welfare for Sudanese people who are suffering from unprecedented economic tightness. But your question, engineer, yes, I think that the uh, political framework agreement is a step forward to draw a roadmap for the political dialogue in Sudan. Needless to repeat that during the last few months, the political arena witnessed uh, many dialogue and initiative. So the uh, trilateral uh, force tend to make roadmap that gather all the opinions in order to unite uh, uh, the ideas and to create a platform against which they are going to handle the Sudanese discourse. This uh, uh, agreement represents a step towards or uh, a roadmap for a future uh, political declaration that will be concluded by final uh, agreement, which will be signed when the group of the, uh, uh, the, the, the December revolution makers sign uh, the agreement. Now it is big challenge for the, uh, uh, the, 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 the framework agreement to include other opponents who have their own justification why uh, they didn't join the agreement. So a big challenge is still awaiting the, uh, uh, the framework agreement in order to include uh, the uh, uh, members or especially uh, the partners of the December revolution who are still reluctant to join the agreement. So agreement actually represent a step and only uh, 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 opportunity for Sudanese people uh, to unite in order to satisfy the four uh, principles, civil state, the uh, liberal democratic state, the federal system, and finally the parliamentary system. Needless to repeat that although we do support the agreement, but still we have some uh, comments about the parliament system. We propose to have presidential system rather than parliament system, but by all means, it represents a step towards to build a new Sudan, the civil state, the liberal democratic system, the federal system in Sudan. These are the common slogans raised by the Sudanese people everywhere during the December revolution. Now their early dreams become reality. Now we are living in the air of the December revolution and we hope that the agreement will unite the Sudanese people and finally come to realize what we describe it as national consensus that all Sudanese people and stakeholders will join the agreement and sign the final draft. Okay, that, 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 that's 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 also clear. But but the problem, if you go back to Makkah al Maghrabi, the problem as as as, uh, as we mentioned in the first first two questions that very important, very important for actually for arm <coughs> struggle, arm struggle, who, who, who arm struggle movements, uh, Jibril, Jem, Justice and Equality, Sudan Liberation Front, uh, Manawi, already Abdulaziz al Hilu. SPLM uh, North uh, and Abdul Wahid Noor in, in Darfur. The four those are the groups who, who took arms against the Ottoman regime. Does this mean that the, their rejection that they are being totally, they are not in the, in the, in the this framework uh, agreement? Does this mean that we will go back to the war, uh, civil war, or, 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 or what, 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 what can you see from from this rejection and how can mm, people can people like you like me like others can mitigate mm. the, this gap and, and let them join so do you think that their effect is, is, is being outside the framework uh, agreement? I, I think they all parties they will move on they will move they will move on all on this all uh, all these obstacles Look here, the situation at first uh, was just like a big shock. A big shock for the people that they didn't sign. A big shock also uh, to the younger generation. This is not what they dreamed. Mm. Okay? But uh, at first the shock will be uh, hard and tough, and after that the people will be more realistic. As we say that uh, the water in the shower at first will be cold, 
But after that, we can, you can, it, it can be easier for you, especially mm -hmm. in the winter of Sudan. So the first day and the second day, you can uh, see people that they are shocked. Even the people that they signed the, the agreement, even they did the things that they, they, they want to do, but still uh, uh, the media couldn't find them all uh, defending and justifying the, the agreement. Uh, because they want people to have uh, more thinking on that. Uh, look here, let us be more frank on that. I, I just want to say that, I always say that uh, if history repeats itself, in Sudan it copy-paste itself, <laughs> not just repetition. Uh, this is our history in Sudan. Uh, cycles of wars and negotiation ag and agreements, it is sad to stuck in this cycle, but I, I, I hope this the, uh, we are coming now to the end of this cycle. Uh, vicious cycle. V vicious cycle. Yes, I, I can remember as example uh, uh, the year 2014. It was a very challenging year to me in my career. Why? I, at that time, I was a credit journalist at the African Union and in Addis Ababa. The, the year 2014, do you believe that the whole year, the start of Khartoum Juba negotiation stop then we start Khartoum SPLM North negotiation North North then it stop the South South negotiation will start then we have the border committees so we spent the year 2014 the whole year the whole year in Radisson Bulu Addis Ababa I was in the lobby carrying my phone and my tablets and move here the, here is Espelim North, Yasir Arman, here is the uh, political powers, uh, Dr. Mariam, here is Professor Gandur, here is uh, Amin Hassan Umar from on the four things, here is Selfa Care or uh, coming the summit or his team, here is the team of the negotiation of South Sudan, here is the uh, American envoy. So I was rounded uh, in, the, in the lobby of the, of, for one year with my sources doing the media. I know them all. And they know the same language happened. They refuse, they, they negotiate. Sometimes mediators will come, pressure, things like that. So for me, when things start, it will come to end. The framework agreement made the start. It was the start will come to end. Yes. But what about, what about the, the other side, the, the, the signatories? Mm. They, they are not they that are not is a accepting. good point that is a very good point the power in the agreement not in the signatories okay if the signatories is stuck in their historical bitterness uh. and historical hatred with some elements and their own uh, split within their own parties a party from here doesn't want a faction uh, split from his party to sign if they stuck in this the agreement and the negotiation will move on and the initiator that they sign and this is the thing that i don't like and all people they don't like so uh, the, the signatories and the makers even the international uh, friends of sudan that they supported the agreement if one of them thinks that this agreement has made uh, a breakthrough in in a way that they don't want and they want to stop it they, it will not stop so, because, so, because look here, the situation now uh, is open for compromise. Yes. And this is the language now. So if you start something, you should end it with the same way that you started. Yeah. So, so you mean you mean that the, 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 because the international community, those who commended the agreement and those who brokered the agreement, they are calling for enlarging the 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 the. the, the the, the signatories, the people who are, who, are, who, are, who are supposed, but the rejection coming from, from inside. Yes, uh, definitely, I hear that clearly from, uh, from U.S. Ambassador. Mm -hmm. He said it, that this, uh, he said it regarding the Constitution, the draft of the Constitution in the lawyer, yeah. uh, in the Bar Union, uh, the steering committee, he said that it's just a draft and it should be open. So I hear the same thing from the U.K. Embassy, and they have a very nice tour, in some political parties, <coughs> and they met some people. I need to hear it from others, mm -hmm. frankly speaking, but I believe the others are the same.
Muhammad al-Shem. I believe the other are the same, and they are true friends for Sudan, and they want all Sudanese to come together. But the signatories themselves, they should be more realistic, okay? This is the end of chapter in Sudan, and this is the start of the new chapter. You have no right to refuse someone because you don't want him. Mm -hmm. if, there are, are, if there are some criteria, put it in the table, all will negotiate. And I, sh I think the power now in the will of, of the people that they signed the agreement and the will of the Sudanese people to protect this agreement and to go and, and, and go to move forward. forward. Okay, that's very good. Professor, uh, Professor Mani Hanun, also uh, some people are skeptical about, about the, 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 the consensus on, on, on a prime minister. He has to be of certain, certain caliber and certain uh, uh, qualities. Uh, plus the, the cabinet. Some people, they, are, they said this, and the creation of the government will, will also aggravate the situation. Can you love to tell us about yeah, for the next for step? Sure. As, as we in yeah. the uh, agreement, uh, they have to agree on a civilian on, on top of the sovereignty council, plus government, uh, prime minister, and technocrats, not politicians. Maybe some, some people they will come. Some of the parties who sign yeah. the framework agreement, they might they might call for being included in the government or. Uh, how, how can they resolve a, a problem like this? Yeah, if this is actually a practical challenge to the agreement. And as we repeat in Sudan, that Satan hides himself in details. When we go further to nominate the prime minister, then more disputes will arrive. And people will, or the signing groups, will find themselves very uh, interested to uh, share this pie of uh, uh, nominating the prime minister. Nominating prime minister actually will be a big challenge to these conflicting groups and especially uh, during this very tight uh, times in Sudan. People they have different opinions, they have different backgrounds, so that will represent challenge. But I think there are some options to overlap this uh, challenge. One of these options, we can go back to the themselves very uh, interested to uh, share this pie of uh, uh, nominating the prime minister. Nominating prime minister actually will be a big challenge to these conflicting groups and especially uh, during this very tight uh, times in Sudan. People they have different opinions, they have different backgrounds, so that will represent challenge. But I think there are some options to overlap this uh, challenge. One of these options, we can go back to the history and again we can recruit one of the leaders so far well known to the uh, revolution uh, makers and well with a, a solid background, especially in leading the uh, government during the last few years. So there are some options that uh, international community can handle in order to overlap this big challenge, uh, nominating the prime minister. Nominating the prime minister actually one of the practical channels that will face the agreement who will lead the remaining part of the transitional period 
and who the leader is qualified. So I think it is important to, to talk about the standards and the criteria through which we can recruit the prime minister rather than nominating the prime minister. So we have to fix the standard, we have to fix the criteria, then we can search about the qualified person that needs these requirements. So I think by way or another it will be subtle. But for time being, it is important to include all the stakeholders in the uh, uh, framework agreement in order to broaden the scope of the membership and to give chance to the people still outside the agreement. So we have to hire these uh, uh, groups, and especially the active players in the December Revolution are strongly encouraged to study the agreement and to forward their comments about the agreements. And it is important to join this uh, 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 agreement in order uh, to go ahead uh, to unite the country and to uh, maintain political stability. I think there are some uh, abolished news that is during the last week. Today, uh, President al-Burhan received uh, Maulana Muhammad Osman al mirghani I think on the way of the national unity. People are moving in this direction. So Maulana also will contribute to the unity or national unity as a one figure or in the political arena in Sudan, he can contribute to the unity of the Sudanese people. So I think there are some uh, 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 promises, there are some uh, uh, good news uh, uh, on the way in order to support the agreement and to push agreement forward in order to go to the second step, the political declaration, and also to consider the free uh, uh, issues outside the, uh, uh, the frame or political framework, uh, the Juba Peace Agreement, social justice, and uh, uh, the reform of the uh, security forces. And these issues also is still awaiting discussion by the parties concerned. So they, uh, I think what is important to accelerate the time and take immediate actions in order to push the agreement forward and to go ahead. This agreement, I think, golden opportunity for all Sudanese people and especially December revolution maker. Please don't miss this opportunity. Just uh, join the opportunity and uh, forward your comments and make your comments about the any uh, uh, terms of this uh, special uh, uh, agreement. Agreement represent, I think, uh, opportunity for all Sudanese people to unite, uh, to take the uh, right uh, track in order to build the civil state. That is one of the principal slogans during the December Revolution. Hopefully, Sudanese people will join the agreement and will make very constructive discussion and arguments on this uh, uh, proposal and to share the uh, uh, agreement, the framework agreement. Definitely, finally, I, I am very optimistic that Sudanese people will unite and will uh, uh, yeah, appreciate the national interest of the community, that you have to unite and to sign the agreement. But, but, yes. but, but uh, according to the agreement, the agreement gave about one month one month to form this uh, mm. the, the cabinet and to select the supreme uh, civilian. Now almost half of the time, two weeks now, uh, awesome. pass and nothing looms in the horizon mm. about about a consensus or any agreement on a certain figure or certain bodies for mm. the cabinet. And what can you tell us, Sad Makil Maghrib, about this? Now half of the period, one month, one month Two weeks already passed, and things are still moving slowly, and still opposition is active, and still are taken to the streets. And mm. so, yeah, yeah, yes, can, can uh, they be bypassed? These uh, people, unfortunately, people now they are not the thinking the way that professor is thinking, mm -hmm. which is to set the criteria and then come to choose people. Mm. This is the right way. This is the correct way. Part of the people that they signed the framework agreement, they think that this is the right of the uh, special uh, political parties that they have right to choose and not others. The signatories uh, only. Yes, no. not just the signatories, even within the signatories, the FFC, they think that this is the, the, the right to choose, to choose someone, not from them. Mm -hmm. They are not saying one of us, but they are saying because they are the the forces of the revolution. Okay. Uh, for me, if they have, uh, if they have a good choice, let them tell uh, the public opinion. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
to check on this person. So they are not immune from making mistakes. Mm. They made mistakes before. So they can nominate, but I don't think they have the right to appoint. So if they can nominate a list of five, it could be a good solution. Mm. But one of, the fi of these five should be picked by the others. Let us move in this, uh, think in this way. Something in the details. I, I, it, is, it is not uh, our role to go in the details. We, uh, as writers and people, that we, we need to push the process. Okay? But look here, I have some worries. Uh, the Minister of Finance, Jibril, Dr. Jibril Ibrahim. Okay. Dr. Jibril, Jibril Ibrahim now is implementing the free economy policy, which is very hard policy very tough policy. This, it is just like uh, a surgery to the Sudanese economy. And he is standing in the eye of storm. Okay? And that connected with uh, international agreements and connected with the program. So if you just remove him now, suddenly, and bring someone who could be a good, a professional, expert, but he's not tough. Because in the Ministry of Finance, it is not just your knowledge. It is the way that you take the decision and your experience. It is my personal opinion. Uh, things should move uh, not in a, in a kind of shock that can disturb the Sudanese economy. Do we have now a stable exchange rate or not? It's a question. We mm. have it. Mm. Okay. So why not for... Uh, uh, a political show, we move someone, okay? Uh, I'm not defending someone to stay. I'm saying that the other who, who comes to this position should be fitting the bill, mm -hmm. okay? But I don't want all things just to go in the way of political show and the way of uh, uh, fight and fight back uh, between political parties uh, FFC, the Central Council, and the new Democratic Bloc. We want someone to come from here. No, you should remove that from here. This is not a good way. We should look at the Sudanese interest, and also they should include others. Yeah. Okay, my question here, if you include the Popular Congress, which is part of the Islamist former regime, and you include Ansar Sunnah, and you include uh, in, the, in, in the process of signing uh, the, the, uh, the advisor of Bashir, uh, Mawlana uh, Muhammad al-Hassan, okay? Mm -hmm. Why not you say no for Mubarak al-Fadil? Mm -hmm. What is the logic? You included someone from uh, the former regime and was the regime till the last day and the last minute. And you don't want someone who was not part at that time. Well, so uh, what, what is the logic in that? There is no logic, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you add more? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think we have to take a comprehensive approach in order to, to include as large as possible of all stakeholders in order to make a powerful uh, combination that can lead the transitional period. So we can uh, uh, recruit all the uh, parties uh, involved in the political discourse irrespective to their former participation in the four regime. You know, in four regime, most of the players today, they are part of the former regime. If you use the same criteria, that will complicate the matter. Mm -hmm. So our advice is, it is better to create a new grouping. In that grouping, we have to in, uh, protect our national interest. We have to protect the principle of December Revolution. Anyone who believes in uh, freedom, in peace, in social justice, you can welcome and join the uh, uh, agreement in order to share wide range of majority of Sudanese people in order to protect the agreement from any drawbacks in the future. So I think it is important to open the doors for all players in uh, uh, political arena in Sudan and to accept, except the criminal. Criminal should go to the court. Other people, politicians, are welcome. They have to share and to support and to uh, serve their country. So why we, you exclude uh, this and that? This is not the way to build the nation.
I think the right way, we have to open the door to the maximum, and we can make large front that uh, protect the transitional period and enhance transitional period and also enhance the national unity of the Sudanese people. And finally, we will go to the election. That is a very important for the that political the problem. Yeah. In order to reach the elections, we have to create a one very powerful national front that uh, back the transitional period and also very powerful prime minister that can take the decision. So we need to unite. We don't like to exclude uh, many parties and to uh, weaken the uh, front. And may, uh, finally, you will face uh, more challenge when you go to the practice. So it is better from the beginning, we include as much as possible of the people who are interested to support the principles of December Revolution according to the uh, constitutional draft of the Bar Association. Yeah, that, that's very yeah. good. But okay, let me go back to Stad Makil Maghrib because this is very important. Because he was saying that he is sure, he is sure the agreement will will move will move on a little bit, the rejection or the opposition mm -hmm. of others. But do you think the brokers, the players, the countries? Now we have, we have, as all people know, we have a, a two, two a dual system of, of a brokerage, brokering. The quartet and the, uh, the quartet and the, yes, the quartet headed by America and United Kingdom and Saudi Arabian Emirates. Hmm. This, do you think that they will, just in case, to protect the framework agreement, do you think they will come to the point to use any available tools? Hmm. Hmm. The threat. It was mentioned by the Americans that uh, those who are, who are opposing or putting uh, hurdles mm. on, on the implementation of this, they, 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 they are prepared to use the available to do things. They will, it will come to that. Uh, I, I think they, they will push it forward and they, they push it to the direction, a direction of to be more exclusive because they are not alone in the world, mm -hmm. they are not alone in the political arena. You have the tripartite, the African Union, the EGAD, and uh, uh, the, uh, the Uni United, the United Nations. Okay, United and you have the quartet, which is the uh, United States, United Kingdom, United Arab Emirates, and uh, KSA, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Uh, but uh, the quartet, which is for, I call it the hexagonal. Be why? Because they are really six. Why? Because you have China. China. Uh, Burhan just two days before he was in China, uh, <laughs> and China everywhere now, and they have a special involvement. <coughs> so it is four in the, on the table, but out of the frame of the table, you have China. Uh, you have a sixth place, I call it uh, a loose place. Sometimes Russia comes, sometimes Turkey. All people now, Sudan is open now for uh, international intervention. It's yeah. something bad. But here is my point. I, I'm optimistic that the international intervention will not stay for long. Why? Because now this intervention has contradiction within it. Yeah. And the contradiction among the interventionist is weakening the collective intervention. The framework agreement said a very important point, which is a balanced foreign policy. Mm. That is good. Even my personal opinion, where I wrote about the Chinese debt trap, okay? Because I'm pro-free economy. And I think the liberal democracy is the direction of the history, not the end of history, but it, at least the direction of history. So uh, the, the, the Western countries and United States could help Sudanese better on the private sector and uh, the democracy. This is my personal opinion. But the framework uh, agree, uh, agreement said balanced. I wrote before about uh, the Russian disinformation and uh, the process of militarizing uh, economies in Africa. But let take my personal opinion away from the table and all personal opinion and all political lineage and put on the table uh, the, the, the balanced foreign uh, policy of the of the framework agreement yeah, yeah, yeah. okay that, let that quartet uh, help sudan and let others if they want to balance and to help sudan on the free economy on democracy let them come that sounds okay that's good 
Oh, the, the, this, this takes me directly from this point of Stad Makil Maghrabi yeah. to the summit, yeah. the historic summit of China, the Saudi Arabia, the economic summit in China, yeah. uh, Saudi Arabia, and our Arab countries. And Burhan also contributed and presented papers. That, yeah. uh, what can you tell us about this and its effect? I think this is in line, is something good? In line with the agreement, with the framework agreement, as uh, exclusively mentioned in the agreement, that balance uh, foreign relations. Uh, so, f based on that uh, term, uh, President Al Burhan joined the Chinese Arab summit in Riyadh and he uh, uh, represents uh, the uh, the, the same uh, uh, balanced uh, 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 way to deal with outside uh, uh, affairs, especially with China. China, one of the uh, uh, great uh, uh, economic uh, partner for Sudan, and they have uh, um, uh, interest uh, even in uh, uh, sometimes intervening in uh, political discourse in Sudan by way or another. So uh, I think the President of Burhan, he joined this special uh, summit and now China moving ahead in the Arab world and they also uh, occupied uh, a significant uh, role in Africa. So this is one of the rivals of the U.S., uh, especially as we are uh, pro-liberal economists. Uh, we uh, believe that a free economy is more appropriate for our country, but still China is there and play a considerable role in political discourse in Sudan. Because one of the strategic partners for, uh, for very long history, the last three decades, China played a very important economic role in Sudan. So Sudanese people are always uh, 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 keen about relation with uh, China because they cannot ignore the role of China as extended in uh, Africa. So the summit uh, definitely uh, will uh, move in the directions of the balance approach that exclusively stated in the agreement. So the Sudan preserve the right to, uh, uh, to establish relations with the outside world, with China, with Russia, with uh, Turkey, with different parts of world, they have the right, according to the uh, framework agreement itself, it gives the right to the balance. The, uh, balance yeah, this is a, a right uh, for the Sudan to exercise in the uh, international uh, discourse. So I think the summits will take uh, the say, uh, this direction and uh, give a practical the explanation to this uh, clause and in line with the agreement. Still, the Sudan is taking the right track and moving according to the framework agreement. China definitely uh, play a very important role in Sudan. We cannot in Africa. Ignore, uh, in Africa as well, mm -hmm. besides Russia. Russia also uh, makes significant development in Africa and especially in explorations of mineral resources in Africa, in gold, in other mineral resources they contribute substantially in Africa. So these two rivals uh, are, they are very important to consider when we talk about the foreign relations with the U.S. U.S. should pay attention to the role of these two rivals in the economy and even in the politics they play a very important role in Africa. We cannot ignore the role of these two forces. Okay, okay. So, Makil Maghrabi, yes, from this point, I want your comment also on this uh, Chinese the, the, the summit of, of between China mm -hmm. and opening the doors for China. Uh, definitely to have some effect. Definitely, it will not. Uh, America will not be happy because they are talking about this and about the uh, expansion of Russia, even especially in the Red Sea. So they are afraid, and they consider this part of this land as part of their national uh, security. So about this, your, I want your comment about the the after effect of this of this summit, the Chinese Arab summit, uh, together with last week the the the, the uh, council of arab economic uh, uh, council unity mm. of the arab okay uh, yeah. so can you, uh, can you tell us about both the effect uh, uh, i i echo a lot of points that said by uh, professor and uh, i want to add that having that i confirm that uh, i think the free economy 
uh, is, uh, uh, or the economic freedom is the best choice for Sudan, not socialism, and, uh, or even not hybrid uh, systems. And also, uh, the liberal democracy is a direction uh, of history, and uh, we get better uh, uh, improvement uh, if we are with democracy and with free economy. But United States and its foreign policy, it is the reason of the Chinese expansion. Now, if you just Google it, 35 countries in the world under US sanctions. Being san sanctioned on the country or sanctioned on the people or the person, and the sanction of the person actually it's sanctioned on the country. Yes. Because if you want to transfer something from bank to bank, the bank will be worried if yes. X is part of the sanction or not, so that it will slow the process. So by the end of the day, any the language of sanction is something making the club of the sanction is big, and China and Russia now, the biggest member now in, in the club of the sanction, want more people to join. Yes. Uh, the club welcome. Okay, and now you are creating a parallel system to your economic system. Also, it started in the, in the change of Sudan. So the U.S. started, uh, the U.S. Congress started to talk about sanctioning the leader of the transition of Sudan. So I wrote an article at that time. I said U.S. cannot burn the candle at both ends. <laughs> Either you work with the leaders of the sanctions or, or leaders of the transition or you sanction them. Yes. You cannot sanction them and work with them for democratic transformation and uh, transitional <laughs> justice. Uh, you cannot put the uh, regular forces in sanction, the category of sanction, and you talk about capacity building and uh, military reform. You already sanctioned them. Mm -hmm. So United States foreign policy should be liberated from the mentality of the activist. Human rights is important. But look here. What United States will do with this security vacuum happened in the Sahel region of West Africa after the French withdrawal. The same, the hap what happened in the Central Africa, the gap was filled by the Russian and the Wagners and others. The security yeah. vacuum was filled. And Tuadera now, the president of Central Africa, I call him Bashar Assad of Africa. And Central Africa became Syria. The, yeah. Syria, the Syria of Africa, mm. okay, because it's protected by Russian companies. So now this will happen in the Sahel region. If you have a professional army in Sudan and professional forces in Sudan, you should deal with the Sudanese army. You should deal with rapid support forces. You should deal with the Sudanese police. If, they are, if some mistakes are there, you should do something with them to reform uh, the mistake to merge, uh, to, to integrate the army. You should work with the art, with the art movement, the gym and the Sudan Liberation and Al Hilo if he joins, because you need powers on, in the region to move from war to security and to peace. And this is not the language you make sanctions and say to them, go to Russia and go to China. So, so you believe that Americans should, they should, should change the, the foreign policy. The, the foreign policy. And, and it is not what I'm saying. That has been said even within the American professors and the American think tankers and even some of activists that they have long service in the activists, but now they are concluding what they are, uh, their experience with very beautiful ideas, criticizing their, their, uh, their experience. So foreign policy of United States should be changed and the foreign policy of the United States, it is the reason of the, of the, of the Chinese debt trap and the Russian uh, militarizing economy of Africa. Yeah, but you said very yes, good. Uh, it is, it is very good point. My colleague, uh, Saz Makil Maghrabi, actually this is uh, true. The U.S. should revise the sanction strategy with the other nations. That damaged the nations, increased poverty among the nations, resulted in damaging consequence to this community. U.S. urge and very important to take a spot decision to revise sanctions against nations. And that at the end of the day, 
will not harm the working uh, uh, systems or regimes in the uh, target nations, but actually harm the people, the ordinary people. So the, uh, the, 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 the strategy of sanctions, or economic sanctions uh, on nations around the world, it harm the peoples of the country, not so, the rurals of the country. Well, you, you both so, agree yeah, too that so the that ep episode is, is, is very interesting yeah. and uh, just we uh, discovered that we run yeah. short yeah, of sure. time. We have, we have no time. Thank yeah. you, uh, Professor Tabani Hanoun. Thank you very much. Stad uh, Makkil Maghrib, you added a lot of uh, value to the uh, program. Uh, thank you, dear viewers, for being with us in the last hour or so. Hope to see you next week in a different episode. But I am inclined to, to, to have both get uh, together next week. Thank you and bye.